right, so good morning, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another exciting Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants broadcast. I know there's a lot of new faces in the audience today, and so if you are new to us, we are all about bringing conservation, adventure, and science into classrooms around the world. Everything we do, including this entire incredible series, is live on YouTube and remains there forever. So if you want to watch this program, three years down the road, you can head to our YouTube channel and do just that. A huge thank you, especially to all our Alberta classes today. I think we've got the entire province of Alberta in today's broadcast, over 190 classrooms registered for today's program. And I wanna note for our speaker and for everyone else, my favorite YouTube comment of all time uh, from the beginning of this, that we have a class that's usually outside doing forest school and they've taken the day off to be inside with us. So way to go in Calgary. Thank you so much for joining us for a very special program today. Now I will note too, my legit goal is to break our all-time Kahoot record today. And so our Kahoot pin, which is going to be between our talk and our Q&A, is right below. I'm going to highlight this a little further on in the broadcast. I'll make sure we got lots of time to get in. We're going to try and break our all-time Kahoot record with this epic audience. So if you guys want to join me, I'd love to have you take part for a fun quiz. Now today continues our epic peak discovery series. It's why you're all here in conjunction with the awesome team at Parks Canada. We've been featuring their incredible parks in Alberta and British Columbia, Water to Lakes, Kootenay, Jasper, Banff and beyond, featuring some incredible stories over the last few months. You can check them all out there and three more to come in the month of May. So lots of exciting stuff. But today's program, the reason you're all here, the reason you're so excited, is that we are going to dive in on bears. We're going to learn the difference between the bear species that we can find in the parks. We're going to learn how, how and if you should approach a bear, how you should handle bears out in the wild. We're going to learn all about bear safety and more at the amazing Banff National Park. Not just one of the most beautiful places in Canada, but one of the most beautiful places on planet Earth. And so without further ado, I'm going to welcome in one of my favorite educators of all time, Lori, who has the amazing job of getting to share the stories of Banff in the world. So Lori, welcome to the broadcast. Thank you so much for joining us again and take us away. Hello. Bonjour, everybody. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, Jesse, great introduction. Love it. I'm going to dive in with a quick pre-show quiz. All right. We're going to test your knowledge of bears. Uh, so type your guesses into the chat. And uh, the first question is, what kinds of bears live in Banff National Park? You can choose more than one answer. A, black bears, B, panda bears, C, grizzly bears, D, polar bears, and E, teddy bears. So type your answers in the quiz now um, and take a guess at how many bears you think live in Banff National Park. To give you a little context, it's 6,641 square kilometers of park. So how many bears do you think would live in that amount of space? Amazing. Okay. Well, we're giving we're getting a ton of things coming in on YouTube already. Our Miss Cuffelts class joining us live. You guys say grizzly and black. I think you think you might have something going there. And on YouTube, we got A and C. We got black and grizzly are our common ones. We got a few little throwing in some E in there. We got teddy bears maybe, and we'll find out if we have teddy bears in the park. No one's saying panda. It's very sad. I don't I don't think we have pandas in the park. Having been to Banff. It would be so cool if we did. Might be a different forest, but I love your participation in the chat, everybody. And how many bears? 500 is our first guess. 150, 200, 1,000 bears. So under 1,000 in the several hundred range. That's okay. where we're, we're sticking right now, Lori. <laughs> okay, excellent. Well, we'll get to the answers here pretty shortly, um, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna get rolling with the presentation. I will get to those answers. You can keep those answers rolling in. Uh, so I've got a presentation about. 25, 30 minutes long. And then we'll also get to our Kahoot, which is going to be epic today and answer all of your burning questions. So be sure to record your questions in the chat as well as we go along. All right. So first thing I would like to do is begin by acknowledging that Banff National Park is within the present day territories of treaties six, seven, and eight, as well as the Métis homeland. The lands and waters of Banff have been used for thousands of years by Indigenous peoples for sustenance, ceremony, trade, and travel. Let's take this moment to thank them for their continuous stewardship and for sharing the land with us. Now, Banff National Park is a place for people to experience, enjoy, and learn. And our job here at Parks Canada is to make sure that this place and all the wild creatures that live here remain healthy and intact for future generations. In our Bearware program today, we're going to talk about bears and you. We'll learn about bears themselves, how to identify them, and what they need in order to survive. 
We'll figure out what challenges bears face in the Rocky Mountains, and we'll look at a few of the things that you can do to help bears. And finally, we'll consider how to prevent a bear encounter and what to do if you do see one. So first question is, where do bears live and travel? And when do we want to be on alert in bear country? Well, around Banff, that's here and that's all the time. So this photo was taken in the middle of town of Banff springtime at about 8.30 in the morning. Fortunately for the photographer, they were a good distance away on the opposite side of the Bow River from this bear. Now, this isn't a common sight, but it's a great reminder that anywhere you happen to be in Banff National Park, you are in bear country. Now, before the start, we did that pop quiz. Are you ready for the answers? All right, there are two bear species. There are grizzly bears and black bears in Banff National Park. So, sorry, no polar bears, no panda bears. And while I am certain that there are teddy bears around the town of Banff, they do not count as a living species of bear. So the answer to our second question, great, uh, great guesses there. The answer is there are only about 60 to 70 black bears and 60 to 70 grizzlies in all of Banff National Park. Now, that's not very many bears for such a big place. And we'll talk about why a little later on. So first thing is, how do we tell these two species apart? Now it's time to introduce our two celebrities who are going to help me out today. Here's G Bear, the grizzly bear, and B Bear, the black bear. Take it away, fellas. Oh, check it out. We got two types of bears from the valley wide. With two kinds of bear climb the mountainside. We got two sides of claws on two types of paws. Two shapes of faces nature embraces. With two kinds of print to give you a hint. And two silhouettes so you don't forget. We got two types of ears and all kinds of hair. Check out the style of G Bear and B Bear. Oh, oh. yeah. Oh. oh, don't forget to say yo, bear, when you're out there. Yo. All the bears with the hump go digging, and all the bears with the rump go climbing. And all the bears with the hump go digging, and all the bears with the rump go climbing. All right, thanks, bears. We're going to check in with them again soon. So in the video, they say about some of the differences between black bears and grizzly bears. So let's have a look, starting with their faces. In the profile, the grizzly's high brow swooping down to the snout gives their face a dished or concave look. While in the line from a black bear's forehead to the muzzle to the tip of its nose is straight and long. The grizzly has smaller, rounder ears spaced further apart, but the black bear's ears are larger, taller, and closer together. The highest point of the body for grizzlies is over their shoulders. Their shoulder hump is a huge muscle mass used to power their front limbs when digging. For a black bear, the highest point in the profile is the rump, although it may appear to have a little bit of a hump depending on their position. Claws are a clear indicator as well if you can see them. You can often see claw marks left behind in the bear tracks. The front claws of the grizzly are white or light colored. They can measure about 10 centimeters or longer. So if you take a look at your fingers right now, grizzly claws are just as big or even bigger. Grizzly claws are long, straight, and made for digging. And a black bear's front claws are usually dark colored and relatively short, about three centimeters or one inch long. They're sharp and they're curved for gripping tree bark and climbing. Both species can climb trees, but black bears are better at it. So it's easy to tell the bears apart, right? And what about color? Are grizzlies always brown and black bears always black? Not even close. Color is not a good indicator of species, and a bear can actually change color when, within a season when they shed the last year's coat and grow a fresh one for winter. Grizzlies can range from blonde to black in color, and their silver-tipped fur gives them a grizzled appearance. That's how they get their name, grizzly bears. 
And black bears are not always black. They can be black, brown, cinnamon, blonde, or even white, like the famous Kermode bears or spirit bears on the west coast of Canada. And size is not always a good indicator either, because a subadult grizzly could be smaller than an adult black bear, for example. Now, what kind of bear do you think this is? Now, remember the clues. Is there a shoulder hump? What about long, pale claws? Are the ears smaller and rounded or closer together and long? Based on what we now know, I hope you guess this is a grizzly. Now, you can even see some light shining off those long, pale colored claws. But actually, in the end, it's okay if you can't identify which species of bear you're looking at because the rules for saying, staying safe around them are the same for both black and grizzly bears. Because some of the places that we use for recreation are the bear's backyard too. And now that you know the physiques of our two Rocky Mountain species of bear, let's check out where they like to live. G-bear and B-bear, what do you have to say about habitat? Oh, that's right. G bears and B bears don't like to share territory. They do benefit from the same types of habitat during some seasons, but they make a point to feed and breed in their own territory. Black bears are adapted to forest environments. They often use trees for escape and protection. They spend much of their time in the valley bottoms and forested slopes. Up until the late 1800s, the grizzly bear's home range actually included the Canadian prairies, where they could see long distances and they were better, better able to detect threats. Maybe that explains why they don't like to be surprised. In their mountain territories, grizzlies range from valley bottoms to high mountain meadows. They move between these areas depending on where food is available at the time. And what food is available and where depends on the season. Bears are food-driven animals. They go where the grazing is good. In spring, the bears emerge from their dens. And they might wake up any time from March to May, depending on whether they're male or female or a mama with cubs. After their long winter sleep, they might have lost anywhere from 15 to 30% of their body weight, so they definitely need some good nutritious food. Black bears climb aspen trees to eat the emerging leaf buds that are filled with sweet sap. Grizzlies might find and eat carcasses of animals that are buried in the snow after an avalanche, or they'll dig up plant roots and bulbs that are full of stored sugars. Both grizzlies and black bears love to chow down on the fresh spring greens and dandelions that start to grow as soon as the snow is gone. And something that is considered a weed by us, like dandelions, is actually an important spring food for bears. Bees, too. As the snow retreats, bears will range widely to find green pockets, especially grizzlies. Bears search for food as it comes into seasons in different locations and elevations. While black bears typically remain in the valley bottoms, grizzlies favor plants that grow in the higher elevations or on avalanche slopes, like this cow parsnip and heady sarum. Okay, trivia time. Let's see if you can answer this. What is the most important food source for bears in Banff National Park? Do you guess that it's flowers, marmots, berries, or fish? Mm. In the chat now, what do you think, Jesse? I know I love a good marmot, but uh, we'll see if our, our audience today thinks anything. With YouTube, I know it takes a few seconds. Check out the options. What do we think? Well, I'll give you I'll give you a hint because yeah, a lot of people are going to guess fish, but it's not fish in Banff. That's the trick. On Canada's west coast, yep. bears rely on spawning fish like salmon, but we're on the eastern slopes of the Canadian Rockies. We're on the east side of the Continental Divide, so we don't get the salmon run here. So, while they do eat fish when they can, yep. um 
that's not the most important food for our bears in Banff National Park. So it was funny you said that because we had about 25 fish in a row and then you started that and now it's, oh, we had berries for a while. Now it's a mix of flowers and berries. I'd say berries still has the lead. So berries is our- All right. All right. Well, let's see. Let's see if that is the correct answer indeed. And yes, berries it is. And in particular, the kind of berry that we see here called buffalo berries. So these little fruits are rich in calories and sugar. They begin to ripen around mid-July at lower elevations and continue ripening at increasingly higher elevations until September. If you enjoy hiking, camping, and just hanging out in the forest, recognizing this shrub is a very good idea. If you find yourself in a ripe patch of buffalo berries, you might also see that. Yes, bears become very, very focused on eating when they are in a good patch of berries. Because in late summer, bears enter a phase called hyperphagia. That's a big word, but it just means, means that their appetite increases and they never feel full. And bears will spend 20 to 23 hours a day eating and looking for more food. So if you're a growing kid, you might know this feeling, right? Anybody out there just never feel full, could always eat? Well, yeah, Jesse, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there's some kids out there growing and eating like crazy. So that's hyperphagia. During hyperphagia, a bear can eat up to 200,000 berries in a day, consuming up to 400, sorry, 40,000 calories. So if we were to do a human food equivalent of that, that would be about 95 Taco Bell soft tacos or 40 Dairy Queen banana splits. I don't know if any of you could eat that much in a day. I don't think I'd be capable of it. I, I'm not going to throw down a food challenge here. All right. The objective for the bear, though, is not to eat banana splits. It's to eat the natural food and to pile on enough fat to make it through a five-month-long snooze. Now, food starts to become scarce as summer turns to autumn. Bears seek out the richest foods that they can to finish fattening up. Grizzlies use their powerful claws to excavate burrows full of plump, delicious ground squirrels. Insects under rocks, mushrooms, and the last of the berries all end up in the bear's bellies. Now here's a composite picture of the same bear in spring on the left-hand side of the picture and in the fall on the right-hand side. Six months of feasting allowed this grizzly to pack on plenty of fat for her long winter nap. And you can also see how thick and warm her fur looks in the fall. Because it's a short feeding season, every aspect of a bear's life before they return to their winter den is driven by a quest for food. Let's hear from G-Bear and B-Bear again. I'm digging a den before it's too late. I see winter is a-coming. What is my fate? Well, did I gain enough weight to hibernate? Well, did I make enough love to procreate? I said I gotta get fat, got to find a mate. I said I gotta get fat, to got to find a mate. We both gotta get fat, to got to find a mate. We gotta get fat, to got to find a mate. Oh, 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 baby. All right, bears, you have done your duty and earned a rest. So winter, here we go. When food is hard to get, bears have a great technique to survive. They simply sleep the winter away. They choose den sites at higher elevations so that the snow can cover the entrance to their den and shelter them. Females typically go into the den earlier and emerge later than males. They snooze most of the time, but then they do actually get up once in a while to stretch and scratch and care for their young. Bears don't eat again until spring. And if a pregnant female bear has gained enough weight to sustain herself and her future cubs, they'll be born during the coldest months of the year, during January or February. And they weigh only about one pound or half a kilogram at birth. They're hairless, toothless, and completely helpless. They snuggle up next to mama bear and they feed only on her milk until after they've left the den by which time they can weigh as much as 10 pounds or almost five kilos. And they start out so small, but they can grow to weigh between 300 and 700 pounds as adults. That's about 130 to 320 kilograms. So here's a fun challenge to try later. 
See how many kids in your class it takes to equal the weight of Banff's biggest male grizzly bear, who tops 700 pounds or about 320 kilos at his fattest. All right. So now that we know where and when bears spend their time, let's see what challenges they face in Banff National Park. The first challenge is to find enough habitat. Male grizzlies need about 1,500 square kilometers for their territory. For females, they usually range about one-third that distance. For comparison, the city of Calgary is about 1,200 square kilometers. Wow, that's quite a bit of space, right? So why do bears need such a large range? Because in the landscape of the Rockies, food sources are really spread out. There's a lot of rock and ice at the tops of the mountains, and that kind of territory doesn't produce much food, the way that the valley bottoms do. So bears have to walk up to 20 to, or more kilometers a day to find enough to eat. Have you ever done a 20-kilometer hike in a day? Have you ever done it without snacks and had to find your food as you go along? That's what bears do. Adding to the challenge, the bears of the Central Rockies live in one of the most developed landscapes in North America where their species still exist. Both humans and wildlife tend to use the valley bottoms to make their homes to live and travel in. In the case of the Bow Valley, towns, campgrounds, roads, and train tracks are all fragmenting the land and making it difficult for bears to roam around to find food, mates, and shelter. And living so close to so much human activity means more chances for human bear conflicts, like more encounters, garbage, dogs off leash. Bears also spend time touring the same areas that humans do. So that means there are greater chances of them being struck by a car, a truck, or a train. And one of the other challenges is that it takes a lot of time to make more bears if some of them die. It's a slow process to replace them. Female bears have to survive to the age of five to eight years old before they can start having cubs. Grizzly cubs then stay with their mothers for three to five years, learning how to forage and move through the landscape. During that time, Mama Bear does her best to protect them. That's why they have such a fierce reputation. And only once they go out on their own can she try to have more babies. So given all of these challenges, you might ask how Parks Canada is managing this place for visitors and residents while also keeping bears alive. We know that bears are an important part of the ecosystem here. And here are some of the ways that we help them. Parks Canada is restoring natural processes like fire to help bears. You see, for nearly 100 years, people had tried to put out any fires that started here. But today, Fire is used on purpose to improve habitat. We call this prescribed fire because this is like medicine for the health of the forest. Prescribed fires create open spaces like meadows and grasslands. These sunny spots can grow food like berries and edible plants for lots of animals, including our bears. The construction of wildlife bridges and tunnels along the Trans-Canada Highway through Banff has helped bears to reconnect pockets of their habitat. There are currently 44 crossings on the Trans-Canada Highway between the Banff East Gate and the British Columbia border. That's 38 wildlife underpasses like the one you see on the left, and six overpasses like the one on the photo on the bottom right. Fencing the highway has reduced wildlife vehicle collisions by more than 80%. Now, how well do you think the under and overpasses are working? Well, at first, our research cameras only caught individuals using them. But now, families seem to like them too. Female bears teach their cubs to use the crossings. Now, which type do you think black bears and grizzly bears prefer? Do you think it's the same kind of crossing or different? Research shows that grizzly bears prefer the bright open overpasses or wide underpasses so that they can see what's around them. And black bears prefer low, narrow underpasses. They don't seem to mind going into a dark tunnel. And keeping bears out of trouble is an important part of what the park does. Now, what do you think might attract a bear to town or to a campground? Food and garbage. 
See, bears are smart and they only need one reward from litter or a dirty picnic table to associate that with an easy meal. Once they've been treated to such luxury, food-conditioned bears will constantly come back for more, turning them into problem bears. Now, we have bear-proof garbage bins throughout the park and within the town of Banff. When they are used properly, bear-proof bins prevent bears from becoming food-conditioned to human food and waste. What do you think makes them bear-proof? Well, they're built of strong, heavy metal, and the lid latches shut. Bears can't get their paws into the lid to open the latch and release it. So the park does all of these things to help bears, but you can help too. The small decisions you make in any area with bears go a long way to helping them survive and keeping you safe. The key to avoiding a close encounter is to prevent it from happening. And how do you do that? Well, let's learn what to watch out for while you're hiking. And I think G-Bear and B-Bear might have something to say about the signs the bears leave behind. Crack, scat, scratching kills. Rolled stones and digging in the hills. That track, scat, scratching kills. Rolled stones and digging in the hills. That track, a footprint left by a bear. Scat, pooped with berries or hair. Scratching on trees to mark a territory. Animal kill. Bloody and gory. Stone roll for insects below. Cause bears, bears are omnivores, you know. You got digging for roots under the earth. Cause ground squirrels are fat, give a bear a greater girth. Track, scat, Scratching kills, rolled stones and digging in the hills. Track, scat, scratching kills, rolled stones and digging in the hills. Use the old flag, here's the fact check. Taking up time to ask what you sound, and you will find the group left behind. Proof that the bear came trying to do this. Yeah, good. You've been working on that one, huh? Check it out solo. All right. All right, now that we know what to notice when walking around in bear country, let's do a rap recap. So tracks, a footprint left by a bear. These are easiest to spot in the soft dirt or mud or even in fresh snow in the spring or the fall. So keep watch for tracks when you're out hiking. Scat, poop with berries or hair. This can give you clues about what the bear has been eating. The red scat on the left, for example, is full of buffalo berries. The dark one on the right is full of roots and grasses. Now, if you find hair in the scat, then the bear might have eaten a deer or a ground squirrel. Scat that's fresh is going to look wet, and that is when you really want to pay attention because the maker of that scat might still be nearby. Scratching on trees to mark a territory. Bears find a tree that is just right, and then they leave their personal scent marking by rubbing on the tree, scratching on it with their claws, and even peeing on it. You might even see hair left behind on these rub trees. So again, be on the lookout if the signs are fresh. Now, here's just a word of warning. The next slide shows an image that some people might find upsetting because we are talking about animal kills, prey. If you smell something rotten, there could be a carcass nearby. And bears can pick up that scent from several kilometers away. Bears hunt when there's an easy opportunity to take an elk calf or some stranded fish, but often they let the wolves do the hard work and then they chase them off the carcass and get a free meal. Another clue that carrion might be nearby is to listen for sounds of ravens, crows, and magpies calling because they make quite a commotion when they're dining on a carcass. Okay, if you were covering your eyes for the last slide, you can look again. Safe. Stones rolled for insects below. So bears will move surprisingly large stones to get at worms and bugs underneath. And digging for roots under the earth. Bears love to eat sugary and starchy roots of certain plants. They also dig up ground squirrels. So if you find a spot where the dirt is freshly turned up and there's not a trail crew in sight, you're going to want to keep a sharp lookout for bears. Now, G-Bear and B-Bear didn't mention this, but be sure to watch for bear food sources near your hiking trail too, like these sugary buffalo berries. They can be red, orange, or yellow when ripe. And when you're in the great outdoors, it really pays to pay attention to your surroundings and notice clues that a bear might be nearby. In fact, we encourage you to use all of your senses. 
Look, listen, feel, and smell. Leave your earbuds and speakers at home and just tune into nature. So pay attention to things like, are you near running water? Because if you are, a bear no, might not hear you. Is it windy? In which case, a bear might not pick up your scent. And what kind of activity are you doing? Trail runners and mountain bikers have a much bigger chance of surprising a bear because they're moving fast and quietly. And what is the vegetation like around you? Are there buffalo berries? If the trees are dense and you can't see around the corner, a bear might not see or hear you coming. So one of the things that you can do is to make noise on the trail. Use your voice, not bear bells or music. Bear bells are not recommended. This is especially important in areas like the ones I just mentioned, where a bear might have a harder chance of seeing or hearing or, or smelling you. If you do see a bear, stay calm. Try to keep yourself and the bear relaxed. And then you back up slowly and give the bear the space it needs to feel comfortable. When you prepare properly and keep all of these things in mind, there's very little chance that you will encounter a bear close up. And here's a few more tips to avoid close encounters with bears. One of the most effective things that you can do is hike in a group. When you stay together with your group, there's a better chance that you're keeping up a conversation, which also helps to alert bears to your presence. Bears generally won't approach a group of four or more people. If you see a bear in the distance and you're in a smaller group, try to join up with other hikers if you can and stay together. Also, always keep your pets on a leash in a national park or consider leaving them at home. Off-leash pets might harass wildlife and it might cause a bear to actually follow your pet straight back to you. The person with this dog off leash was very lucky because bears were in the area only a few minutes after they passed through. And Parks Canada recommends that if you are working or playing in bear country, you should also carry bear spray and learn how to use it properly. Bear spray is for the adults in your group to carry. Is it like bug spray? No, you do not apply it before you go hiking. Bear spray is like pressurized hot sauce. So if you've ever touched a jalapeno pepper and then touched your eye, you might have an idea of what bear spray feels like. Jesse, have you ever done this? Yeah, well, I've never sprayed myself with bear spray, but I've certainly touched my eye. I always touch my eye, actually. It's my great bad uh, habit when I eat anything spicy, so no good. Oh, it feels, it's the worst, right? So it, it, bear spray will make your eyes, nose, and throat sting, and it makes you cough. When it gets into the face of the bear, it makes it's strong enough to make that bear very uncomfortable for long enough to let you move away. So it's an effective last defense in case a bear approaches you. That said, if you have already done everything else to prevent a bear encounter, it's unlikely that you will ever be close enough to a bear to need to use your bear spray. There we go. Hot pepper. But when you need it, you need it fast. Be sure that the person carrying the bear spray or people carrying the bear spray have it in a holster on their hip or on the frame of their bike or in an outside pocket of their backpack such that they don't have to take their backpack off to get at the bear spray and they can get it really quickly. Parks Canada has a really good tutorial video on how to deploy this spray on YouTube. And Jesse, if you'd like to throw that link up, um, this is highly recommended to watch. And we'll put that in the chat as well. There we are. So we also have the wildlife rules. Now, these are the best habits that we have uh, that we can practice that keep us and the wildlife safe in our national parks. The first one is always ensure that your food and garbage are properly stored. Remember, bears are incredibly motivated by food, so we need to make sure that they're not learning to approach campsites or picnic areas or roadsides to steal a snack. Now, we keep wildlife safe by following posted speed limits, and we slow down at dawn and dusk or whenever wildlife are present at the side of the road. 
whether it is on purpose or by accident, never feed the wildlife in the national parks. And finally, give animals space. Stay 30 meters or three school bus lengths away from animals like deer, moose, elk, and bighorn sheep. And stay 100 meters or 10 school buses away from large carnivores such as bears, wolves, and cougars. To help you remember these rules, we have recorded songs all about the wildlife rules and more. So we've got a link there as well um, that we'll put up in the chat. And there it is on the screen. You can go to our webpage to stream or download this music and the videos and enjoy them whenever you please. And G Bear and B Bear is on there as well as an audio track. So to wrap it up, let's turn it over to G Bear and B Bear one last time. Of claws on two types of paws, and two kinds of print to give you a hint that's two silhouettes so you don't forget. Check out the style of G Bear and B Bear. B -Bear. B -Bear. B -Bear. Yo, Bear. All right, well, that's Bearware from G Bear, B Bear, and me. And we have a few minutes left to answer your burning questions. So put those in the chat or hop on camera to ask directly. Outstanding. Well, Lori, if you ever need someone to jump in and film one of those videos in the future, I will hop on a plane so fast to come to Banff. It'll make your head spin. Um, <laughs> I do want to note uh, while we're pulling up our Kahoot together, I'm going to leave that banner up for everyone so people can get the game pit. For those who are new to Kahoot, the faster you answer, the more points you get, and what you win from this is Lori and I's everlasting respect. We're going to try and break the all-time record for the most Kahoot classes of all time. We're already at 132 of you, which is amazing. While we've got a few more pouring in, I will note too, uh, we're going to go live with questions. YouTubers, you can share in the chat. Miss Gefelt's class will be coming to you um, as well. And I'm going to do a few quick shout-outs for some classes too as you guys are coming in uh, with this. This has been such a fun program today. The most rap we ever had in one of our programs, uh, which is very particularly exciting. Let's um, just, uh, yeah, just, what are we at? 178, we're approaching 200 people on Kahoot. This is amazing, I love it. I'm gonna go live with it in about two seconds for everyone. I just wanna take a second here. There's so many comments that it's taking me like a minute to scroll through the YouTube comments just to get to the shout outs I'm trying to give to classes, which is a good sign. But I know we've got Sedan, Kansas. We've got Shag Harbor, Nova Scotia. We've got our Prescott Learning Center in Spruce Grove, Alberta. We've got so many classes and just to show that I'm willing to always do this. If classes say stuff like this and they just type in, you know, hey, we want a shout out, I will totally give you a shout out. So Mr. Edwards class, welcome in Fort McLeod and everyone else. Are you ready, Lori? Are we good to like go and dive in with our Kahoot? I think so. Oh, I'm ready if you're ready. I'm, I'm oh, so ready. I was born ready. <laughs> I am like never been happier. Here we go, folks. Bear aware in our first question. In three, two, one. YouTubers, get the answers in quick because I know it's a little delayed for you. How can you avoid a close encounter with a bear? Pay attention to clues, berries, digging, droppings. Stay with your group. Make noise to let the bear know that you're there. Or perhaps all of the above. Anyone who's done a Kahoot with us before will know that one of these is most likely to be our answer, irrespective of the question, really. Hundred, so many answers. This is great. So let's see. A lot of you got this right. A lot of you were quick on, on the first one, which is correct, but all of the above is our correct answer. Let's see what our leaderboard is. If you are on the leaderboard by the end, let us know. We'd love to hear where you're joining from. Elated Leopard starts out with our lead, leading into a true or false question, Lori. Miss Gefelt's class, I'm coming to you live right after this is done. So the question is, you use bear spray like bug spray and apply it before you leave the house. True or false? Do you want to spray yourself with really hot peppers before you leave the house? Mmm, ah, ah, the anguish, <laughs> the anguish, 160 of you already in, two more seconds, ah, what is it, the answer is false, yes, do not, do not put on bear spray before you go, but do put on bug spray and sunscreen, that's a very helpful hint, and Lady yeah. Leopard keeps our lead, going into question three, all right, how much space should you keep between yourself and a bear in the wild, is it 100 meters, 10 school buses, 
30 meters, 30 school, three school buses. Leave the wild to bears. Just stay in the cities. Don't leave Calgary. Uh, stay there. Or go and give it a hug. What do we think? Oh. Just five more seconds. So many of you have your answers in. Way to go, Cahooters. This is amazing. And our answer is 100 meters. And most of you got that right. A few of you wanted to get a little closer, 30 meters. And it seems good. But that bear can cover that distance very, very fast. So 100 meters is a good, safe benchmark. Right, Lori? Yeah, absolutely. Bears can actually run faster than the fastest human sprinter, Usain Bolt. They are faster than him. Elated Leopard has gone wire to wire, leading into our final question here. This is a multi-select, and I will note, no serious points for this. Bears are the best. Your answers are, yes, I wish I were a bear, or I prefer squirrels. And we just want to get a sense of where your, where your mind's at after this amazing bear program. <laughs> this is like the slowest answering one of everyone. Everyone's like, is it a trick? There's no right answer. <laughs> just <laughs> have fun with it. Huh. So funny, like the tentative answers is amazing. Oh, so most people, yes. And then 66 people prefer squirrels and, and they should head out to another one of our programs. We've actually done squirrel programs with you before. True so, story. It's on our YouTube channel. <laughs> so our, our final tally, Ms. Gefeltz, class grade twos, and coming to you live. We're going to go a little long today because we're rebels together, but YouTubers stick around and I'm so excited for all your questions. Our winner today is Elated Leopard. Way to go. If you are any of those folks, I know you are in the chat. And we're going to head to our grade two group Welcome in, guys. Hi, welcome into the broadcast. Hi, come on mute. Come chat with us. If you have a bear question for Lori, anything you want to ask about our bears today, you can unmute your microphone and join us. Uh, we'd love to have a question from you. Okay, anybody have a question? Hmm. Aubrey. Hi, Aubrey. <laughs> um, what can you do when you see a bear and they don't have any, like, Great question, Aubrey. Yeah, you you first of all you kind of stop and observe what the bear is doing, right? If the bear is kind of happy eating berries and hasn't really noticed you, you can just kind of back quietly and slowly out of that situation and take a different trail that day. So that's one of the things I want people to know too, is as people, we have all kinds of choices about where we go and what we do with our recreation. But for the bear, that's its home, right? So we need to be respectful of that home. We ring the bear's doorbell when we're coming through. That's by making some noise with our voices. And uh, we respect their space. And if we see them, we try and just back away and give that bear its space. If the bear has seen you, then that's the situation where you might want to have a bear spray at hand. Yep. So I would say try to always be prepared. Absolutely. And this is something when I went to Banff for the first time, the first time I went to an outfitter store, they said, do you have bear spray? You should get some. Got some. Never had to use it. Never saw a bear out in the wild, but always good to be prepared in any situation where you're in the wild with potentially dangerous animals. Um, we got some great questions coming in on YouTube. Keep them coming, guys. Lots of time for YouTubers. Miss Ross class wants to know, how old do bears live, Lori? Right. So in the wild around here, most of our bears, uh, if they're reaching a good ripe old age, about 25 years, 20 to 25 years, pretty good lifespan for a wild bear. I know that at the Calgary Zoo in particular, um, their bear Louise lived to be 34 years old. So with dental and medical care, bears can live a little bit longer, but she was a very old gal by the time she went. Not only did we get a, a bear age question, but we also have a, a proof that you should go and get dental and medical care. So if you haven't been to the dentist lately, that's a very important thing. Uh, unexpected lesson from today's bear broadcast. Um, Mr. Eschengoff's uh, uh, homeschoolers group, they wanted to know how fast do bears run? You've mentioned faster than you yeah. see. I know faster than a horse is what I've heard too. Uh, any kilometers or miles per hour for our class of glory? Sure. They can run over 40 kilometers per hour. I've heard up to 50. Um, but they're sprinters. They're not, they're not marathoners. So they can walk all day long, but they'll run very, very fast for short bursts. Yeah. Great question, guys. All right. Miss Matsuba's class, our Spruce Grove, Alberta Prescott Learning Center folks. Malik wants to know more about the life cycle of a bear. Anything you can tell us about their, okay. how they grow up? Well, one really interesting thing that bears do is uh, they have their mating and dating season in June, um, but the babies don't start growing inside the mama bears until November when she's already in the den. So they do this really interesting thing where they have 
like um, there's um, what they call a blast assist. This is getting a little bit technical, but um, the, the baby bear doesn't start growing inside the mom till she knows, or her body knows if it has enough fat to make a baby bear or a couple of baby bears even um, when they go into the den in November. So that's one of the really cool things about bears uh, that not a lot of people know is that um, they kind of hold on to that. Maybe it's a baby, but they won't know until the bear knows if it's fat enough or not in the fall. Very, very cool. And blastocyst is something that's only been mentioned maybe three times in of our 3,000 <laughs> broadcasts. So I appreciate that very much. Yeah. Um, Ms. Gefeld's class, I know you guys are out for lunch momentarily, so I'm going to come back live and then we'll take a few more YouTube questions to wrap up. But if you want to unmute, you're good to go. Hi. We do. We have one more question. So, Zane, nice and loud. Hey, Zane. like you don't have any bear spray and you're like, buy a river. You're buy, buy a river. No bear spray, Lori. Yeah. yeah. I would make lots of noise in that case. You make sure that the bear knows that you are in the area and that, uh, that, you know, usually when you make noise with your voice, it, it, I would even go so far as to it, by a river or where there's lots of wind in the forest, you clap your hands and you call it, yo bear, every, every once in a while. Um, that's kind of like ringing the bear's doorbell, lets it know that you're in the area, that you're moving through. It can track your sound and kind of get an idea where you're headed, which direction. And it'll probably just move off into the forest and you'll walk right by that bear and you'll never know that you walked right by a bear because it's just, it's not interested in having trouble with you. It's, um, it just wants to eat as much food as it can. And honestly, people aren't that tasty to bears. So, yeah. you know. Not, not like those berries or salmon or marmots at all. Yeah. Um, Lori, we're going to take a few questions from YouTube. Miss Gefeld's class, if you guys have to head off, that's totally good. Uh, so many questions came in on YouTube. We're going to go a few more minutes together. Let's see all these great questions from everyone. Miss Martin's class wants to know how many baby bears do are usually born or how many babies do bears usually have? Yeah, bears can have up to four or even five babies, but that's that's pretty rare. Most of the time, it's two or three around here. Yeah. Miss Cage's group wants to know what's the biggest bear in the world or in the park. I know we've got that question too. So park and world, if you want to help sure. us. Out. <laughs> the, the biggest bear in Banff National Park that we know of is bear number 122. He's got the nickname The Boss because he's the biggest male bear that we have. There's another one that is almost as big as him, um, but he tops out around 700 pounds just before he goes into hibernation, about 320 kilograms. Um, but there are way bigger bears in the world that are also grizzly bears in uh, Northern Russia and, and also Katmai National Park in the United States. A little shout out there. Uh, Katmai has this amazing thing called Fat Bear Week in the fall, and they uh, kind of follow some bears on, on on video camera and people vote for their favorite fat bear and those bears can top over 1400 pounds so they're almost twice the size of our biggest male grizzly here so check out cat mice fat bear week when you get a chance it's really so if you hadn't had said that i was all prepared to highlight that for our audience it's one of the coolest science communication things in the world so i really encourage your audience to check that out uh, we're going to take two more quick questions and then we're going to wrap up Oh, simple one. We've had a lot of Winnie the Pooh references today. Do they eat honey? I'm really curious. Well, sure. If a bear uh, were to find a beehive that had honey in it, I'm sure they would just lap that up. And, you know, that 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 story comes from somewhere. I'm sure it's um, it's a genuine thing. But it's I'd say it's kind of rare that a bear would uh, would find a honeycomb. But they'd sure love it when they did. Mm, I love honeycombs. Um, Shadow has a question that's like my question. So we have a lot of people that are, of course, worried about their running into the bears, what to do if there's a running with a bear. She's got the exact opposite question. Where would you most likely to see a bear? Is there like the most common site in Banff to go out and check it out and find a bear? Well, you know, it's it, it really, you know, we get about 4 million visitors here every year in Banff National Park. And many of them, their dream is to come here and see a wild bear. Um, one of the, the the best places that you can go is in the early summer, drive the Bow Valley Parkway. It's uh, it's our old highway, used to connect Banff and Lake Louise. And uh, it's a beautiful scenic road. The, it's a little bit slower because there's no fence to keep animals off of that road. And um, that is a great place to go and spot wildlife. But 
when you see wildlife out there, no matter if it's an elk or a moose or a bear, we do recommend that you pull off safely to the side of the road and stay in your car so you're not disturbing that animal and changing its behavior. Yep. I love the nuanced and detailed answer. I will note having driven that road, it's one of the most beautiful roads, highways I've ever been on in my entire life. And you highlighted these incredible overpasses. Now we've actually done a whole program with you on those before, but yeah. it's not just a a conservation measure that's iconic in Canada, it's globally recognized. Like people come from around the world to see the over and underpasses in Banff and the success that they've had with preventing wildlife collisions. So it's really special that we had the chance to mention that. And I really encourage your audience to check it out on our YouTube channel. Lori, we could talk bears all day. We've got this rapidly excited audience. Um, but I do want to note, uh, if you guys want to check out Banff Music, find out more with our bear rap friends and more check that out if you want to see our bear spray video this is the youtube link i have put that in the chat and i will share it with all our groups that registered for today's program and security and safety around bears parks canada of course has a resource for that too because they have resources for everything because they do this all the time so Lori, what a, a pleasure i want to note again our peak discovery series if you want to check out our remaining programs we've got one on may 9th 17th and 26th all in english we've got a french counterpart for every event that we do uh, on our second site for that so you can check that out on the exploring by the seat of your pants page and before we wrap up today is there a final message you want to share with us about bears before we say farewell to our audience just you know bears are an icon of the wilderness they are such a special thing to be able to coexist with and it's up to us to behave properly in bear country so that we can help them to survive here for future generations no better message than that a huge thank you to our audience for all these great uh, bits of feedback thank you thank you thank you um everybody and uh we wish you a wonderful wonderful rest of the day Lori, thank you so much again bye for